Hello everybody, welcome back to Thermodynamics. So today we're gonna to be talking about thermodynamic properties. Now, what are thermodynamic properties? Thermodynamic properties are things that can be used to describe a system macroscopically. And when I say macroscopically, I mean on like a, on like a general scale, like a big scale. So these are things like pressure, volume, I'll explain later why I did why I drew my V like that. Temperature. There's something called specific volume, and that's denoted. That's why I drew my V like that. This V denotes specific volume, while this V denotes volume as a whole. And while you guys might not know what specific volume is exactly right now, we'll still get into that. But that's how um, I differentiate the two. So thermodynamic properties. There are different types of properties. We have extensive properties and we have intensive properties. Now, intensive properties are things that are properties that are independent of the size of the system. So they don't depend on the size of the system at all. So these are things like pressure, temperature, regardless of my size of the system these things are still going to be the same now there are things called extensive properties extensive properties do depend on the size of the system so these are things like mass volume i just drew the v there but that's the sign for volume specific volume things like that so those are examples of extensive properties now I'm sure you're wondering what do we do with these properties we can use these properties to help us figure out what's going on in the system so you can also use these properties to help you find other properties um, what else can we talk about so basically there's something called a state postulate right there's something called a state postulate and this state postulate says that the thermodynamic state of a compressible system can be completely specified by two independent intensive properties so those are things independent of of mass independent of the size of the system two intensive properties those allow us to find all of the that those allow us to define a system completely let me put it like that now um we can also talk about things called processes right a process is a process is <laughs> let me write that in red for a definition a process Now, what, what do we consider a process in English? Something that, something you take time to do, or not even time, something you do from one point to another, right? So that's sort of what a process is in thermodynamics. A process is any change from one state of equilibrium to another. Any change of That's what we consider a process. Any change of one state of equilibrium to another. Now, in thermodynamics, we deal with graphs a lot. So, how do we represent a process on a graph? Now, we have to be very careful about how we do things like this. But, um, so let's say I wanted a, there's something called a PV diagram, right? P meaning pressure, V meaning volume, right? So let's say I'm going from one state to another state in this PV diagram, right? This denotes my process, but which part is the first part? Which part is the second part? I have to specify that. You can put a little dot there. I like to put a circle with the number around it. So that's the first state, and this is the second state. How do I know which direction it's going in? You have to draw an arrow. That denotes that the process is moving like this. So I mean, I think it's pretty simple. Now, if I said, for example, my pressure was at, there's something called bars, right? So my pressure was at one bar and it moved to two bar while, while going from 10 meters cubed per kilogram to 11 meters cubed per kilogram, right? 
So we see an increase in pressure and an increase in volume, right? That's a change. So that's a, that's a process that went on. Now, there are certain names that we can give to processes to make them more easily recognizable. So you don't have to say, oh, this stayed the same every time or, oh, this stayed the same. So we have different names for these. One would be isobaric or isobaric. Some people pronounce it isobaric. But remember how I talked about this, something called bar in terms of pressure? We can look at iso meaning the same and bar meaning pressure. So that means that in this process, the pressure stays the same. So I think it's pretty simple enough. So if you guys hear me say something is isobaric, that's what I'm talking about. We also have isothermal. Iso, again, meaning the same. And remember when I talked about in my first video, thermo meaning, thermo meaning heat is the same thing. So it's the same temperature. There is also something meaning the same heat, and that's why we have to find that temperature and heat are not exactly the same all the time when I'm talking about this in thermodynamics. So, but just know that isothermal means that it was the same temperature from process one to process two. We also have something called isochoric. This means that there's no change in volume. Um, I like to use isovolumetric more just to give me more of an idea that, oh, it's volume, isovolumetric. But this is also just as valid. Isochoric means no change in volume. We also have isentropic. Now, what does isentropic mean? Isen, again, same. Ice, sorry, same. Entropic. There's something as a value called entropy. So we're going to learn about that later, but isentropic means that the entropy stays the same in this. And then we also have something called adiabatic. Now remember how I said temperature and heat are not necessarily the same in thermodynamics? Adiabatic means that there's no heat going in or out of the system. So, so if I say that the process was adiabatic, no heat came in or out of the system. Now, we're going to talk about something called a cycle. Now, what is a cycle? Again, in English, we know that a cycle means something that goes around, right? So let's say I have another PV diagram. Going to have to get used to this vocabulary. PV diagram meaning pressure by volume. P. V, right? Let's say my uh, system is going from one state to another. How do I know which direction it's going in? First state, second state. Let's say it were to come back to that same state, that first state. That's what we know as a cycle. The first, the start and end points are identical. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. That's what a cycle is. And I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Next, we'll talk about, I'm going to harp on this a lot because it's really important to us. Units, units, units. Units are really good in helping you check your answers and even getting the right answer in the first place. So, stay tuned and we'll talk about units next. Thank you, guys.